the Angelo Ficara Project. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank mm-hmm. you.
Thank you, thank you people. Uh, great to open this up, this great event. For a great man that we all play with. Um, Howie personally was a great supporter of me. Uh, my first guy was playing in the Ulster County area, so I could go on and on about that. But let me introduce this great band here. This is the Angela Caro Project. On drums, Jody Sumber. Dr. Jody Sumber. On bass, Mike Wanowski. On second guitar, Tom DeSisto. First guitar composer, Angelo Ficara. Thank you. Lots more coming. Stick around. It's Vinnie Martucci over here on keyboards. Keith Prey on saxophone. Jill Hughes, she's going to back me up on vocals. She's an amazing singer. I hope she gets to do some solo vocals here today. She certainly should. Peter O'Brien on guitar. Mike Tomiko on guitar. And Jim Curtin on bass.
things you say and do I decided to make me blue But it's a dark punk shame I look Cause you make all this lies be true But the truth makes love last longer While the lies make my love stronger Ain't that peculiar Peculiarity I really loved from the 60s was Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions. Hey, Laura. Thank you. 
Randy. There's a train coming, picking up passengers from coast to coast. All you need is faith. Feel the bees as a humming. You don't need no ticket. Just get on. So people get ready for the train to join it. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. Faith is the key. Open the doors and board up. There's room for all among those. Now there ain't no room for the hopeless sinners who would hurt all mankind just to save his own. Have pity on those whose chances grow slim. There's no hiding place Kids the kingdom fall So people get ready There's a train of coming Picking up a passenger Goes to home All you need is faith There's the be You don't need no ticket You just so much. Thank you. Put some hand claps here if you can. Say it, it's called It's All Right. Say it, it's all right. It's all right. Say it's all right. It's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. One more time. Say it, it's all right. Say it's all right. It's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. We're gonna move it slow. When lights are low. When you move it slow. Sounds like a motor. Cause it's all right.
the John Masons for no particular reason. That's uh, Gabe Butterfield on drums, Jim Curtin, who you met in the last band on the bass. I'm Jimmy Eppard. I live right around the corner from you. So I can walk home if I have to, which means I can drink heavily. Anyway, uh, God, I played with Howie and mostly with the Crows, but I was also in several versions of Enormous Johnson. And uh, I think I may have even played with Uncle Funk once or twice. So we're gonna we're gonna offer up a little prayer here to open things up. So close your eyes and think about Howie. <laughs> Yeah.
Thank you. Killian's Blue. Do a, I'm going to sing a uh, Tom Waits, Tom Waits song for you. Tom Waits for no man. I played a couple of uh, duo gigs with uh, Howie. Howie was uh, quite a jazz player, actually. So there were jazz gigs where I was playing upright bass, and Howie was playing piano. He was a great, great piano player. Not a lot of people know about that. And... Uh, he was always busy, you know, he was busy making thumb pianos, he was busy silk screening Mingus on a shirt that I bought from him. <laughs> he kept himself busy, he was quite an entrepreneur. Anyway, uh, I loved him for that. If 
everybody's crying of mercy when they don't know the meaning of the world. I better love situation. Sure enough, get worse. Everybody's crying justice Just as soon as there's business first Tried and true Black and blue Give a chill Pick up your own souvenir People running round in circles Don't know what they're headed for Everybody's crying peace Peace on earth Just as soon as we Paul Butterfield song, because why not? Oh, so 
I just want to reiterate that every group getting up and everyone in the band has some association with Howie Brown from over the years, either playing in soul and funk bands or soon to be coming up uh, in the next hour or so jazz, bebop, and that whole element of things, plus uh, uh, comp different compositional things. Uh, we're all connected by his thread, and I uh, want you all uh, to keep that in mind. Our next band up, uh, if I see them available, is going to be Mike D'Amico and um, Pete Levin and um, uh, Peter O'Brien. And then we're going to move into uh, uh, some jazz and swing things. So um, thank you all again for coming and stick around. We're going to have more events and things coming up as the day goes on. Don't go away. Thank you. 
Let's hear it for Peter O'Brien on the drums. Yeah. Rich Syracuse bass, Pete Levin on piano. Hi everyone. I'm Wendy, Howie's wife. Thank you. <clears throat> wow. All right. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all again for coming. It's so amazing. And we have people, a lot of local people, and my family from Long Island, and from Florida, and my friend from California, and I know I'm gonna be forgetting someone, but it's just amazing how people came out for this. How he would have loved it. Um, <laughs> how he would have loved it. And I forgot what I was just going to say. So I'm going to look at my notes. Uh, oh, I, I just wanted to thank all the musicians. I, no, we never. This is just, you guys are just making the day. And again, to thank Vinnie, Mike, and Paul. I, they were the ones that really put all the music together. But all of you being here is really making it happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I wanted to mention again that there's a video of Howie's life playing in the other room. Um, I, I might be posting that on Facebook, I'm not sure yet, but so that's playing. And I also wanted to mention that before I left the house, I looked around for Howie Finalia 
thing that there's a there's a lot of stuff like that. And I know a lot of you know that he used to love to make those T-shirts with people on jazz artists on it that he bootlegged. And I just took whatever I could find and I put them out on the table there. You can help yourself. Um, and there's also just a couple of stray videos that uh, he would, had made teaching videos for people. There's one of Matt Fink there. <laughs> just take what you want, okay? So um, the main thing that I want to tell you about Howie is um, he loved his life. He loved his life. Before cancer and after cancer. <laughs> Even after cancer, he loved his life. He made the life that he wanted to have. And um, he connected with a ton of people, and he did his fishing, and going on the boat, and kayaking, and going to the Caribbean. Uh, when we met, um, when we first met, um, he was 21 years old, and I was older. <laughs> And I just want you to know that I'm responsible for him coming to Woodstock because I'll tell you why. I broke up with him. <laughs> we, we were together for a year. Now, those of you who know Howie, talk a lot? Talk a lot? Yeah. When he was 21, he didn't talk at all. So, and I was a talker, and I always wanted to talk about everything. And that was mainly why we broke up. It wasn't that he wasn't really hot. And, and I adored him. I adored him. But I think I did him a really big favor, because he needed to go to Woodstock. He needed to do that. And he created such a wonderful, wonderful life for himself. So about 15 years ago, I get this email, and it's from him. Maybe you don't remember me. I'm like. <laughs> I remember you. Maybe you don't remember me. And, and you know, he was telling me about his life, and he, it, such an adorable, wonderful way. And we got together again. He came to New Jersey, and we had dinner. And I'm sitting there looking at him, thinking, okay, you're back. <laughs> it didn't take long for us to get together. We were together for 15 years. Um, we just got married in 2021. And um, how he never thought about marriage until he had cancer. And one day he said to me, I wish we would have gotten married. And I said, well, <laughs> why don't we? And, and, and so we did. And, um, and about, you know, two years ago. And it was wonderful. We had a wonderful, wonderful 15 years together. <laughs> Thank you. people hear cancer, it's, it's awful, and it's such a terrible diagnosis, and he had a terrible diagnosis. He had pancreatic cancer. When we heard the news on April Fool's Day, thank you very much, uh, we couldn't believe it. And after the initial deer in the headlight and the shock and of it, um, he completely changed his way of thinking about himself and um, his health and his body and what it would take to heal. He wanted to eliminate any negative thing that he had going on. And I was able to help him with it because that's what I do. I help people to get rid of negative things that they have going on. But he way outgrew me. You know, I helped him in the beginning, but then he was just, you know how he was, researching and he found the people, Joe Dispenza was one of them, um, wonderful books on cancer that people would share, Tara Ryan, <laughs> thank you. And um, he developed this positive attitude, and it wasn't bullshit, it was the real deal. And um, he was a happy guy, and he told me that the last two years of his life he, most of the time, he never felt better physically. <laughs> Go figure that one out. I swear to you, the guy just lapped up the chemo. I, I, 
I was horrified by it, but he couldn't wait to start it. And he really, until the end, he, he really didn't have a bad reaction. Um, he felt great, but he also told me that he was the happiest he had ever been. And it was real. And I just want to say that a lot of you who are here were part of that. Um, he wanted to reach out to people who he could talk to, who could be with him on this journey of positivity. He didn't want anything negative. He didn't want anyone feeling sorry for him, feeling bad for him, but it was more than that. He expanded his consciousness. He really, really did. He let go of things that he had been holding on to his whole life, including loving himself. And as I was looking through his journal that he kept, and he would write down things that were the most meaningful to him. And he said, um, at the end of the day, it's who you love and who loves you. So, <laughs> and he really, he lived, he lived that. And so let's, Let's all live that. And thank you for coming. I'm very proud of myself that I didn't cry, but I still might. Breathe. 
time, uh, I was in, you know, starting out in bands and this and that, and several of the early bands at Woodstock, if you wanted to empty the room, the band would ask me to sit. So, since we don't want to empty the room, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Molly Mason and Jay Unger to come on up to the stage and uh, uh, do another little swing tune for us. Jay and Molly. Thank you. 
playing with some amazing people as long as I've been singing, and one of them was Howie. Um, I played with him through several iter iterations of what I have done through the years. Started out with jazz, then when I had a soul band, we got him to come up and be part of a three-part horn, three horn section. Um, Keith was in that horn section for a while, and it was just, it was a blessing. And I didn't know if he liked me or liked the band because Howie, like Molly said, Howie didn't talk. After the gig, he'd leave, and I'm like, oh, he didn't like this gig. He's not going to dig this gig. And then he kept coming back, and Molly said, that's how you knew he liked playing. <laughs> because he kept coming back, and I'm so glad he did. And I was very sorry to hear how he's passing, but you know what? When he left on such a positive note, it's so encouraging. And thank you for sharing that story, Molly. It's a great story. I got to introduce to everybody who's up here. So, on the sax, on the alto sax, look, I knew that, that it was an alto sax. Keith, Keith Frey. On the tenor, cast, Dave Cast. On the keys, Dave Lopedo. Yes, did I get it right? See, that's where it pays to be in a wedding band. You haven't known it all kinds of names on a wedding band. And on the drums, we have Roy W. On the bass, Pat Perkinson. On the flugel and the horns, we have Steve Horowitz. And on the guitar, we have Matt Fink.
Jack Dijonette and Pat Metheny and Julius Hemphill and Ornette Coleman and Don Cherry. And, I mean, it just, Carl Berger, it just went on endlessly and endlessly and endlessly. And we were like freaking out. <laughs> but anyway, one of the things, actually, Joe Akeem reminded me of this story. Uh, when Joe Akeem, he's also a CMSer, and uh, there are a couple other CMS people here. Um, uh, when he first got to CMS, he came into the main room and there were a bunch of us around the grand piano doing these exercises where everyone would have their back turned to the piano and somebody would play some random stuff and then everybody had to like sing it back and identify it. And it was like a game of round robin. Uh, if you got like five or six of them right, then you sat down and played. And then you kept getting, so everybody wanted to be at the piano because like you were the longest running Simon Says streak in the thing. And it was a pretty freaky thing. And out of that, we started writing tunes together. And um, uh, Howie has a long list of composition and recordings and all kinds of beautiful playing. And he and I both went off in that direction. For me, um, uh, that ended up being uh, a band called The Dolphins that Mike was in. Uh, and uh, and how he just uh, put together all these different bands and very often would feature his original composition. So we'd like to do one of his tunes right now. Howie, this one's for you. It's called Water Down.
I'd like to thank Mike D'Amico, Carlos, Carlos Diaz, Carlos Diaz, Jim Curtin, Tony D'Augustine, Keith Bray on saxophone, Akini Martucci. We'd like to uh, um, invite uh, Jay Unger and Joaquin Larti uh, to play in. An inter a wonderful, interesting duo. It, it is more than an honor to be part of this event. Wow, it's been a beautiful day. Amazing music. Great people. We're going to just uh, try something very different here. We're going to jam a fiddle tune briefly. Just a little bit of an old fiddle tune. Center are incredibly grateful for what is now called
called the Howie Brown Memorial Fund to support music education in all the different programs and music, some performance as well, in all the different programs for schools, for adults, for the public. I want to thank Wendy for making that possible. that uh, in addition to that, we also may uh, set up a scholarship in Howie's name at his alma mater, Binghamton University, uh, a music scholarship uh, in perpetuity. So that happened, and also Jazz Hat. <laughs> and also for Jazz House Kids in New Jersey, uh, an organization that um, enables kids to learn how to play jazz and help them perform. And this is run by um, Melissa Walker and Christian McBride. And in their new building, the lobby is going to be named for Howie. <laughs> I want you to know that this is all possible because Howie Brown saved his money. <laughs> yes. And um, I, there are other things that I would like to do. So if anybody has an idea for a charity, I would love to know about it. Or an individual in need. Okay? Please let me know wdolber at gmail.com. Okay, so I just wanted to, again to thank everyone for coming. Um, I wish everyone was still here so they could hear me say that the way that people came up to me and shared their hearts in such an intimate way was just the most beautiful thing. Um, I think that that's a testament to Howie and the man that he was the man that, that he was, and in my heart still is, and I hope in your hearts too. So thank you. I'm so grateful for every one of you who talked to me. Yeah. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> well, I'm incredibly yes. moved by being here. I didn't personally know Howie, but we have so many friends in common. This has been like a reunion with so many people I knew that I, I feel like I know him now. I uh, wish we had been able to meet prior, but he's part of our lives now. So we're going to play <clears throat> this tune that was inspired by the Ashokan Center. It was called the Ashokan Field Campus back in the old days. Some of you probably remember that, yeah. <clears throat> and it's, it's truly an honor to play it on this occasion.
Thank you, everyone. Um, we hope uh, the connections and the threads and uh, the history and all the uh, wild things that have gone on in a musician's life in the Woodstock area um, has been made apparent <laughs> today. Howie, we will miss you dearly. And um, I want to uh, extend my thanks uh, to Paul Duffy and to Mike D'Amico. Can you guys come up on stage here? Wendy, too, please. Ah, here he comes. Yeah. Here's the team. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Greeting, family and friends of Howie Brown. I'm Lee Musiker. Howie and I met almost 50 years ago in the fall of 1974. We were both entering freshmen at SUNY Binghamton, and we met in the music department, in the jazz ensemble, soon became fast friends and lifelong friends. Please accept this musical tribute to Howie with a piece by Duke Ellington from his suite Black, Brown, and Beige. Here's a beautiful piece called Come Sunday. I'm going to read you the lyrics rather than singing them. The lyrics are as follows. Lord, dear Lord above, God Almighty, God of love, please look down and see my people through. Often we'll feel weary, but he knows our every care. Go to him in secret. He will hear your every prayer. He'll give peace and comfort to every troubled mind. Come Sunday, oh come Sunday, that's the day. And here is the song.
his memory be a blessing.